Hey, Paul, good to see you again. Uh, wondering, uh, in your year with uh, Ty, getting to know him, what did you learn about him and what makes him kind of the perfect coach for the next uh, few years of this Clippers team? Um, I mean, he's got a history of winning. Um, and, you know, he's, he's a great just person overall, um, great leader. And, um, you know, he's a great connector. Um, and, you know, I, I, I believe and, and think the utmost of Ty. Uh, uh, just a heck of a guy, a uh, really great guy. And someone that I knew before coming into um, LA and being a Clipper. Um, I knew him, you know, before these days. So uh, I had a pretty good connection with T. Lou. Okay, we'll move over to uh, Justin Russo. Hey, Paul, good to see you. You've been one of the absolute best three-point shooters in the league over the last five years or so, especially when accounting for your high volume. You've shown a penchant for getting a shot out of pick and rolls, step backs, pin downs, handoffs, et cetera. So what about this new system under Coach Lou has you excited from a shooting aspect? Um, you know, I think it's just added, you know, shooting on the floor, more space, more playmaking, um, and, you know, we're, we're, again, we're able to stretch the floor a lot better, especially with Serge at the five, um, and we go to a smaller lineup. Um, you know, I think just our ability to play make now and, and, you know, just be dangerous in many different spots on the floor, um, you know, it, it'll be hard to load up on a single individual. So, um, like last year, I got a lot of great opportunities and a lot of great looks. Um, this year, I, I think we'll have the same. Somebody stuck on mute. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. My computer got froze up real quick. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Okay, we're going to move over to um, Nick Hamilton. Hey, Paul. Welcome back. Appreciate uh, it. I wanted to know, uh, now that you have a new coach in Ty Lu, uh, how much do you feel like he'll be able to listen to you more and really play you in the positions and, and, and in areas where you know you can thrive better in this season? Um, you know, it's just me, you know, making sure I'm playing at a high level and, um, you know, just focusing on myself individually, um, on being ready to perform. Um, you know, I've talked to T. Lou on, um, you know, areas where I like it, um, ISO uh, situations, catch and shoot situations. Um, you know, we went over a, a bunch of different scenarios. Um, but ultimately, it's just, you know, me coming into the season, being ready and, and, and you know, uh, being locked in and uh, ready to perform at a high level. Okay, we're going to move over to Andrew. Uh, there we go. Thanks, Curtis. Hey, PG, welcome back. Uh, also, congrats on the engagement. Um, Appreciate it. Thank you. A couple days ago when we talked with Lawrence, he said that he views you as a long-term clipper. Obviously, they're hopeful um, for a long-term partnership between you guys. How do you view your future at this point? Obviously, you have a couple options you can weigh with the extension or free agency. Just like, where are you at right now, kind of thinking about your future? Um, usually, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm in a position where I kind of just want to think about you know, all scenarios. Um, but in this situation, I'm happy. I'm home. Um, you know, it's one of the teams I grew up loving and, and, you know, wanting to be a part of for a long time. Um, I'm committed. I'm here. I want to be here. I want to retire Clipper. Um, you know, I'll say that, you know, and, 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 you know, every year, um, you know, this is, this is where my heart is and, um, I'm happy. I'm happy regardless of whatever happens. I'm happy being here. Thanks, Paul. Okay, we're move, going to move over to uh, Miriam. Uh, 
Yeah. Hey, PG. Welcome, welcome back. And like Andrew said, congrats on the engagement. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So I just wondering what, what the communication has been like between you and Kawhi in the offseason. Have you guys chatted much and, and kind of what's your, your co, I guess, leader goals going into this? Um, I think first and foremost, uh, yeah, I mean, we spent time working out, um, spent a little time not too long ago working out training together. Um, but our, our ultimate goal is just making sure this is a winning environment, um, you know, and, and, and making this about this year. Um, that's, that's the only thing that's important. Starting this year off right, making sure it's a winning attitude, a winning environment. Um, <clears throat> everything else will fall into place. If we, if we put winning first above anything else and everything else, um, then everything will iron itself out. Um, and, and I think that's kind of been, um, you know, where we're at um, as a pair and as a duo. And it has to start with us. And um, from there, you know, we can enforce that upon the team. Okay, we're gonna move over to home. Hey, PG, good seeing you. Congrats on your engagement, man. Um, Thank you. We're in, uh, this has been the shortest off season for everybody, and the bubble was just uh, a major thing for everybody, including you. You went through a lot there, and with how Game Seven ended and everything, I was wondering, two months removed from that, when you look back on it, how how will all that stuff impact you? And going into the season, do you feel like your second season with the Clippers, this will be more yourself and that, do you have anything, do you feel like you need to rebound from the way things ended? Has it stuck with you in any way? Um, absolutely, absolutely. And um, I'm my toughest critic um, at the end of the day. Um, I know what's not good and what's not acceptable. Uh, last year was an unacceptable year for me. Um, and I know that, um, you know, so, uh, I had an off season to train. I didn't have an off season last year going into a season. Um, I, got, I got my off season back this year going into this season. Um, so I feel really good, feel in a great place. I've been working hard, um, you know, just putting a lot of hours in and, and working on my body and, and being in the gym. So, um, man, uh, same way I stepped into my season two in Oklahoma, it's the same way I'm approaching this year. And, um, you know, I'm comfortable. Uh, I know the guys here. Um, we got a great culture, great staff, a great locker room. Um, again, I'm comfortable. Um, and, and that's when I'm at my best, when I'm comfortable. Thanks, boss. OK, we're going to move over to Taylor Rooks. Hey, Paul. Uh, it's good to see you. Um, I know that, you know, you just mentioned that you were your toughest critic. So I guess when you look back on last year, what are, you know, some of those criticisms that you had for yourself and then how do you plan on correcting those this upcoming season? Uh, well, a lot of it was just inconsistency um, and inconsistency in my body. Um, you know, for a lot of people that don't know, shoulder injuries are one of the toughest injuries to come back from. And um, I was, I was, I wasn't myself. You know, I wasn't able to do the things I was I was good at or things that I was comfortable with just because my shoulders weren't at peak performance. Um, but I kind of hit that that you know time frame um, of full recovery, um, and so I'm, I'm I'm good. That's it's an afterthought um, when it comes to the shoulders. I'm I'm, I'm kind of you know transcending into a different area and a different space going into the games or going into working out in preparation. So. Um, you know, I, I was just tough on myself. I knew I wasn't good. I knew last year was a, a rough year for me. Um, it was a down year for me. Um, but the good thing about that, the beauty in that, I'm only 30. I still got time. I still got a lot of years in the tank. Um, and I'm motivated. It gave me a big motivated motivation coming into this season. And um, I'm ready. I'm prepared. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm ready to dive right into this and give everything I have. Thanks so much. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna move over to Dylan Hernandez. Hey, Paul, uh, Marcus Morris was on here yesterday and he kind of echoed the statements that you made in that podcast about that, that Denver series and kind of the inability to adjust, um, you know, which kind of seems to be pointing the finger a little bit at, uh, at least a little bit at Rivers. And I just kind of was wondering, you know, where is kind of that line where, you know, how much he was responsible for what happened in that series as opposed to what, how much the players were responsible for? 
I mean, I think that's where everybody got it misconstrued. We all take responsibility into that. Um, fact of the matter is me being one of the, um, you know, top players on the team. Um, I wasn't at a peak performance. I wasn't playing well enough. Um, the fact that I gave up a 3-1 series being on that floor um, sits with me and haunts me. Um, you know, and, and not to go back and forth and, and you know, I, I want to clear things up. I respect Doc. Um, I think Doc is a hell of a motivator, hell of a um, coach. Um, doesn't mean I agree with everything that we did, uh, but that does not belittle the fact that I respect him and I respected him um, in that position. Um, you heard it from me, you heard it from Mook. Um, you know, we felt we were the better team. Um, they played harder than us and, uh, you know, they ultimately got up, got past us. Um, I said what I said um, and, and, you know, but I do want to clear it up um, because the, the notion out there is that, you know, I don't respect Doc and I'm putting the blame on Doc, um, which is not the case. Um, I am to blame in that situation just as much as anybody else. Um, so, you know, let's, let's, let's clear that up and let's not get that out of hand and, and make that a story. That's not a story. Okay. We're going to move over to Tim Reynolds. Eugene, it's good to see you as most everyone else said, to, to sort of follow up on, on the last few questions. I, I, you said you're, you're only 30 and you're right. You've got a lot of years still in front of you. But I'm curious how you don't feel the pressure of time because I mean you've also I mean your Indiana runs you you were close to it you know the team last year you were expected to be you know right there in the mix for a title you know as well I'm just like how do you not feel like you've let some really good chances slip away and wonder you know how many more you'll have I guess where is that that balance between knowing you have some years left versus you've had some really good teams already. Um, well, you know, knock on wood and, and thank the man above, I had some, um, you know, some injuries that could have been career ending. Um, but yeah, here I am, I'm still standing. I still feel amazing. Um, you know, and I think, you know, my, my game, uh, really transcend and, 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 you know, I, I feel still like I can get better. I still feel like I'm getting better. Um, I'm learning, I'm figuring out, I'm, you know, improving, I'm, um, still evolving and adjusting to this league. So um, at 30, I don't, I don't feel pressure that my window's closing. Um, you know, I, I still feel I could play this game for a long time. And um, that's, that's not really pressure. You know, I know what I put into this game. I know what I put into a season. Um, I, that's the ultimate goal is to win and be a champion. Um, if I don't, so be it. Um, but I know I'm gonna give myself a chance and I'm gonna work as hard as I can to get there. Um, if, if I don't end up being a champion, it wasn't cut out in my cards. Um, and that's nothing that I can do about, but I know what I can do is give everything I have, work hard and, um, you know, see what's in, in, in the future for me from there. Thank you, man. Good luck to see you. Okay, we're gonna move over to Farbach. Congratulations, Paul. Um, just want to know what, what are you most excited for going into this season and what are you excited about with your new teammates? Excited to who? I'm excited to get back on the floor, start a season back off, um, get back to playing ball. Um, at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. Get back to being out on that floor and playing with those guys. 